What's going on, Shrew Game? My name is Camden, and I hope you guys are having a great day. And in today's video, we're doing a nice little update on Bags to Riches, episode 12. We're going to break down some of the things that we've gotten into into this market as of recently. Already break down some of the plays we've had this week, what we're looking forward to placing. We bought a little bit more frequency down at the low point. Uh, we also bought a little bit more MULN. We ended up doubling down on these airline calls, doubling down on the AMC calls. And yes, even though this might be a terrible decision, uh, doubling down on the Apple calls. If things get truly sour right here, right now in aftermarket, uh, basing off of Google's earnings and Microsoft's earnings, then I might have have to cut that tomorrow as in the Apple calls for a loss and that's a-okay on my part I just wanted to take the risk for reward and if it didn't end up taking reward I'm running with whatever I can get we're also looking at ticker symbol R-U-B-Y and ticker symbol N-F-L-X also known as Netflix we're gonna break down these technically as well in a very quick manner so you can understand what could play out in the very near future with this being said let's just go ahead and get right on into the video <laughs> So first and foremost, we're starting it off with MULN, another day, another pullback. And as of right here, uh, that is the wrong support. <laughs> As of right here, you can see you actually got bearish capitulation even lower than the last few days. We talked about this in yesterday's Bags to Riches in episode 11. Uh, you were kind of just floating up here on the support and your first level that you were hitting was up here at this point. And you can see that you still hit the same point, just a true test this time rather than floating right above it. The buying is still there. Your price action is lower in a demand zone. And if you get the moving averages to take contact, and also take some sort of bounce just for them to respect each other. This should be a very profitable and juicy buy signal down here in MULN's float. I'm gonna have to still place a huge value alert. Next is gonna be ticker symbol FREQ. You actually got some of the buying that you wanted to see from these lowest prices, but the difference is though is it was met with sellers immediately. Look at that, just up and down, and then back into some buying again. So your price action's having a hard time trying to find out where it's gonna go next. Uh, let's bring it into the two hours also, and you can tell that you actually ended up taking a bearish crossover, which means that this is a little bit more bearish than you would like to see, and even in the four hours, you're taking a short-term rejection. This kind of just stretches out this trend a little bit, makes it so that you might end up pulling back a little bit lower than you would like to see. But if I can bring this into your daily candle standpoint, all we want is one little bounce from this lowest point to get near the moving average of 224. It's going to bring us into the profits and we're going to leave with whatever the fudge we can in frequencies float. If I can bring frequency into the daily candle setups, yeah, you're pulling back extremely hard, but you're just hitting the supports that we want to hit, just kind of pulling back for the second time. So it gave you the sell signal on a day like today with you down 9%. We bought a little bit more, but we're looking to buy a few more down here at this low point if we catch some strength tomorrow. Uh, we're just really kind of testing the waters in this setup because it's getting a little bit more bearish than we would like. You can tell that we're not the only one averaging down. With your average investor now at 196, you could catch a bounce from this lowest prices. You could run up to your nearest resistance up here at around 170 to 180, around there if you will, and your average investor still won't be able to flip a profit. This is why we're starting to average down in this setup. We kind of just let our position float for a little bit, but down here with you hitting the supports that you wanted to hit, I think it's about time that we start buying a little bit down here. Uh, this is never financial advice, it's just what the Shrewd Gang is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Shrewd Gang. So we're gonna be looking to take advantage of these low points and frequencies float. Next is gonna be ticker symbol AAL, also an airline stock, down a lot on the day. Down a lot on the day, it was basically just a giant bear flag. Now, down here at this lowest point, I bought two more calls just to kind of average down into my position. We have these out all the way until the end of May, and it's just a lot more bearish than you would want to see. You're still trying to respect the same areas, but bring your regular candles over and you are not holding what you want to hold. We're going to simply do green to green and ray it out to the right. You can see it's resistance, resistance, support, and most likely support again. So we're just gonna be a little bit deeper than we would like to see in some bearish activity, taking advantage of it hand over fist with your average investor up there near 20. Once again, one little bounce and you could project off of this short term high uh, would be at $20 flat and your average investor would have to settle for break even. We're trying to take advantage of these prices down here. I know a lot of people are playing with limited capital and that's a okay. So make sure if you're into setups like this, you understand the risk to reward and understand that 
It's a swing play. It's not going to happen in a snap of a finger. And of course, that conviction of yours is going to be tested before you see the moves that you want to see. Next is going to be ticker symbol Indo. Also, some of these other uh, oil plays that we talked about days ago, you ended up spiking on the day, but just pulling back for the rest of the day. It was actually a pre-market gap up and intraday gap up that sent you into bullish territory with these hard pullbacks on the day. Is this really still going to be a good buy down here at these low points? Now, uh, just like with us talking about sentiment and, and crowd sentiment pouring into a stock, there is no buying happening down here. A little bit, but not too much. Your average investor is up there near $40. So there's a lot of bag holders in Endo's float. And only 2% of shares as of today are in the profits. So uh, to me, it's screaming buy. However, this is never financial advice. If you were to buy now and it would fall to 15, theoretically 16, what would you do? Would you buy more or would you have to settle for that loss? That's up to you and your comfort levels. Now, next is going to be Netflix because we would like tracking sentiment over here. Um, at the Shrewd Gang, you're still deep in this oversold territory. Now, what is your average investor doing in Netflix's float? They don't want you to buy it. In fact, they tell you to stay away from stuff like Netflix because it's in a falling knife. Well, it's weird because big money, uh, massive, massive buy-ins, large-scale orders are loading up down into this pit of trading. I mean, this buying down here makes all of the other buying look like nothing. Uh, I kid you not nothing. As you can see up here, you have a lot of buying near 400, a lot of buying at 350. But when you took that one little gap down and made all of that buying look once again, like nothing, as you can see, the big buys that we were just looking at are this up here. So it's a massive gap down and at this low point, and you can see buyers are taking advantage of it. We're looking at supply zones near 240 to 250 on your way back up, and this could happen very quickly, or it could be a slow grind to supply zone. I don't expect you to just break out into safe haven, so uh, expect a little bit of a roadblock, a little bit of some trouble at this supply zone. Last but not least is going to be ticker symbol R-U-B-Y. Now this one, already up 4% in aftermarket. <laughs> So the position that we placed is already up, as you can see. And why did we end up getting a little bit deeper into the setup? So, of course, we have our super trend on the Weeble setup, giving us nice buy and sell signals. Uh, we have ours a little bit different. We change almost all of our indicators in a way that we like them and accept them. However, if we can bring your exponential moving averages over, possibly just into the one hour, maybe even into the 30 minutes, you can see how much your moving averages respected each other. I got in a little higher than I would want to get, but after this massive breakout, I'm using this signal on the day as a buy signal. If we can bring it into your one minutes, I mean, what I was looking at and why I bought so hard into this pit of trading is the fact that these longer term moving averages were crossing over while your other moving averages were trying to bounce. So bring it into the two minutes. It's a little bit more authentic. And you could see that you were getting the bullish crossover as your moving averages were consolidating. I took that as a buy signal in the long term and even the short term on the day. And you could see you're already starting to move in aftermarket because of it. The only thing I would be weary about is a short term resistance distance on your way back up one more pullback to try to get the higher low to see if you can respect this area as support if I can give you any sort of reassurance in Ruby's float go to your recent setup and your average investor is in at three dollars which means that just one little bounce play and I mean one play from this low point to hit our first retest of 240 is a clean bounce a lot of percentage all at once and a beautiful play with your average investor having a hard time being able to flip that profit. Look at the big buyers stepping down here at this low point. I mean, all that buying down there and then watch your massive large scale orders come in. Bam, bam. It makes all the other buying look like nothing. So there's some big money pouring into Ruby, just like it's pouring into Netflix. And these are stocks you don't really hear about much after their recent death. However, at this low point, you can see that they're already starting to catch some bounces. Other than that, we have ticker symbol HYMC to close off the day. A beautiful bounce down here from these low points. With your average investor at two, we simply put a supply zone up here near 180 to $2. And just like that on the day, you're already starting to bounce. It was like a lot of red this morning, even in pre-market with your gap down. And then all at once in a snap of a finger, you made up for all the pain you've received in the last couple of days. That's why you got to stay convicted because these moves can happen at the times where you least expect it. Other than that, though, you guys enjoy yourself. I appreciate you guys staying tuned for this nice little update of episode 12 of Bags to Riches.
If you're here right now, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell as well. It truly means a lot to me. It means a lot to the Shrewd Gang as well. It gets more investors to bat an eye towards our channel, the streams, uh, just the videos on a day-to-day -day basis. Get them to understand that you have to put in time and effort and possibly even lose a little bit of money just to flip a profit and stay profitable in the stock market. It's never a quick buck. It's never that easy because if it was, everybody would be rich. And as you can tell right now, your average consumer in this economy is having a pretty hard time. So it's definitely not that easy. People are starting to wake up to that as of recently. And you can tell with a lot of people getting smoked, yeah, they could be making money now, but that's just them trying to get their portfolio back. It might seem like you're missing out on money, especially if you've been sticking to the books um, as a long-term holder and just buying when valuations get cheap. It can make it seem like you're not making the right decision with everybody making a killing, but almost always um, they don't keep that money. It's an art to make money just like it's an art to not lose money. I'm going to leave it at that though. I appreciate you guys staying tuned for this update video. If you guys want me to go over some stocks, you can always visit our intraday streams every single trading day from 930 to 1230. Every single day we have our morning sessions, get into some plays, get out of some plays, and we just talk about the overall market and what to expect ahead. You guys enjoy yourself. I'll catch y'all boys. Stay safe out there so I can see you tomorrow. Shrewd Gang, I'll catch y'all boys as well. Peace out. Uh... Shrewd Gang.